Fan out, fan in is a common serverless approach that gives us the flexibility to scale horizontally, but it comes with a lot of complexity. Now, durable functions still gives you that scalability while simplifying the code. Let's check it out. So let's say we've got a system full of users and for each of the users, we've got a lot of data on them in various data stores. Now we'd like to write something that can tell, is this user happy with our product or service or, uh, or not so much? So we come up with this amazing algorithm that figures out, pulls the data and um, through machine learning figures something out. So we wrap it up in a nice Azure function because it's self-contained. So we can feed it an input saying, all right, figure out user one, which then works out a sentiment result. In this case, meh, sort of on the line. Not too, not too bad, not too good. So what we can then do is because we wrapped it up nicely in a stateless function, we can feed it to user two. And once again, the same will happen and we'll get another result. <laughs> this time, a lot more happy with our service, 83.5%. Ready to get cracking. We create an entry point, let's say an HTTP trigger function, and uh, we look up all our users in the database. Now, if this process of calculating the sentiment was lightweight and we didn't have so many users, we could just write a for loop um, or maybe even add some parallelism um, by using tasks. And when they're all done, do a task when all. But in our case, uh, the, the algorithm is fairly heavy and the the users there we have a lot of them let's say a few hundred thousand so we decide let's scale out horizontally so we add the items to the queue and now the function that we wrote to calculate the sentiment can uh, scale out horizontally and each each message in the queue can be processed in parallel this is really great because we add more users they just scale out more horizontally but now we have a problem because we need to print out a report in the end now, we could add some functionality in these functions, but that would mean number one needs to check are the rest done. So suddenly our function doesn't become state, stateless anymore. It needs to now know about the others. Then you run into things like race conditions and all of that. So clearly we need another outside party to monitor all of this. So what we do is we decide when they are done with their processing, they write the results to a central store. But a store is just a store. We It doesn't do much. So we need something else to monitor that store. So perhaps we decide on a timer trigger uh, function. And now every once in a while it checks. And once everything is done, the, the report gets printed. You can see how much complexity we've added in this just to add the horizontal scaling. We couldn't write it in process because we need the scalability. But we've paid a price for it. We've written a lot of complexity. We've got queues, we've got different stores, we've got syncing. And, um, and this isn't even talking about error handling. That's where the real fun comes in. What if those items had failed? Now they need to write somewhere else in the data store and the function in the end needs to figure out, okay, those succeeded, those failed. How do, they, how do we handle it from there? Now this is where durable functions come alive. We can write all of this as if it's procedural, a good old for loop, and in the end we print out the report. However, it's not done in process in a single function. It's still scaled out. It's still fanning out to uh, horizontally to different functions and fanning back in. We can add try catches and all that good stuff that we would know and do in an in process um, way. However, we still get the benefit of scaling out. Let's check out some code. I have a solution over here and just a little disclaimer is I'm using .NET 7. It is still in preview. And what you will see is some of these types will be different to the .NET 6 version. Also, I'm running in isolated mode, which wasn't possible until .NET 7. So when we have a durable function, the first thing we need to note is we always have a starter. In our case, it's a, a normal HTTP trigger and we kick off this orchestrator function. Fan out, fan in. We essentially receive a, a normal HTTP request from a, from the post that we look at the body, we get the type and we pass it into this function. And this is where the magic happens in the orchestrator function. The durable task framework 
allows us to write in-process code calling activity functions. And these functions will actually go out to a different functions behind the scenes. It creates queues, it gets added to the queue, gets picked up from there. And hand, uh, it, uh, there's error handling and all of that involved. It makes sure that it gets run at least once. And all of that happens as we described in that diagram. The only difference is this is a normal for loop. I mean, this is literally just taking the input, looping through all the items, and calling our probability calculator, which is a function itself. So this horizontal scaling is happening over here. And instead of awaiting one by one, we decided we're just going to add the tasks to a list of tasks. And when all of them are done, we, can, we don't have to create another function which monitors and checks and all of that. We can simply just say, when all are done, as if we're writing this all in process, let's go to this print report function. It probably looks too good to be true. So let's, uh, let's debug and uh, take a look. All right, here we go. So I've, I've got this, uh, I've got it started. I'm using Postman. I'm just going to do 10 users, kick off that request. And, and you'll see it starts to run over here and uh, logging out user four, uh, user five, user nine, etc. And if I open up my storage explorer and hit refresh, you'll see that I've generated a report that's right in the end. So let's open that up. And there you go. There are our sentiment results. This is a report. Um, there's no styling at all, but it's just to prove the, the concept that we can uh, kick, we've kicked off 10 users, scaled them out in parallel. Each of these 10 were calculated by a function horizontally or in parallel. And once they were all done, we, st we uh, kicked off a function that generated the report. So I hope you can see the beauty and uh, the simplicity of using durable functions and creating fan out fan in, in, in your distributed systems or your serverless systems. Um, so I do want to say there's a lot more to durable functions. If you want to know how they work or how does this magic statefulness happen, um, uh, please check out the video around uh, stateful functions. And there's also some common practices around uh, what you can and cannot do within the orchestrator function. It is a special beast and you need to treat it as such. Uh, you are limited. You shouldn't call async functions etc from there except for things like the activity function so if you want to know more about those ins and outs the do's and don'ts please check that out as well